So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Health and Wellness Spot. This is Dr. Lewis. I welcome all of you. Nice to have people on TikTok back to this live. I appreciate all of you for taking your time to uh, be here. Uh, I want you to assist me in uh, basically confirming that my sound is clear. Specifically, people on YouTube, if my sound is clear, uh, let me know so that we can start this on a high note. Also, if you're on TikTok, I say hi to you. Can't really confirm also if my sound is clear so that we start this on a lie on a very, very high note. Men in the building, this is your time, this is your session. We are going to build a man in this session. So it will be interesting. We brought back uh, the testimonial Tuesdays and tomorrow shall be a testimonial Tuesday. So we have a live for tomorrow that will be talking about testimonial Tuesdays. Prepare that testimony. Come and be on board. People on TikTok, this is for you. Most of the times I bring you on board to have your testimony as shared, so kindly be here. We also stream it live on YouTube. And I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this topic tonight because I'm going to talk about male reproductive health, specifically erectile dysfunction, how to manage it. Do you need any dietary modifications to uh, manage erectile dysfunction? So I am excited for tonight. Even though I came in a little late, we apologize for that. But we are here better late than never. So we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction. Now... Allow me to set up my YouTube studios, uh, and then we begin on a high note. So as people on YouTube streaming, thank you so much for being uh, here, and we're going to make this so interesting tonight. As always, that's what we do, okay? So be lively, talk to us in the comment section as I set this. Uh, Lewy Clean Sound, thank you so much, the sound is clear, and I'm excited to have my people on TikTok back, it has been a minute ever since we disappeared and went straight to YouTube. So let me set this in, then we, we can continue. <clears throat> we just lock out people who are making noise, and uh, yeah, that will be interesting for us. I love these types of uh, interactions. YouTube always has some issues, just limiting monetization. Every other time, we even not, not we have even not yet started the live. They're already limiting monetization. Why though? Why? <laughs> Are we so bad? Eh? Are we so bad, YouTube? Come on, you can't be this. You can't be this way. Always trying to limit monetization. When a gentleman is trying to earn a living. <laughs> All the same, we shall continue. We don't uh, care about that. Good. So let me say hi to some individuals who are already streaming in on YouTube. I can see Virginia Thomas as always. Carol and Jerry, excited to have you here. Halima Hussein, Eugene Carlos, Catherine Mudoni, Lenny Indakwa. Ah, Lenny, welcome aboard. Uh, I can also see Catherine Mudoni. Uh, I'm also seeing uh, Susan Osinia, Mine O'Brien, Halima Hussein. Once again, I mentioned that name for the second time. Uh, Jane Lidede, Sianda Mudini. Welcome aboard, Kekeli Kafui. Hassan Ibrahim. How are you, sir? Lydia Muhongo, Lois Makomere, and uh, Kilwake Regan. We also have Lego Steve in the building. Welcome aboard, and thank you so much for being a patient with us. Also, Romy is coming in on TikTok. As usual, everybody is here. We can't even mention those people on TikTok. There are so many. Miki is also in the building and Anduku. So let's jump straight into this. I hope it becomes interesting. Tag that person. If you have anybody who uh, is experiencing erectile dysfunction, be kind to tag them to tag them along so that we can educate and help them uh, run or recover from this condition. Now I want you to know as a simple definition. Let's not go into the syllabus. Erectile dysfunction is basically you or a man. Being unable to erect and then maintain that erection strong enough for a sexual process. Okay, so possibly some of you will go for 15 minutes, some of you will go for one hour, depending on you as an individual. But uh, literally 8 to 15 minutes of a sexual activity is perfect. However, if you cannot maintain that erection, you cannot have that erection and you cannot maintain it, that is a serious problem. And I also want you to remember that this live and my views on this channel are not to substitute your doctor's advice. No, they are not. 
my views on this platform or on these lives are actually supposed to help you uh, to help you learn and learn and relearn most of the things that you've learned from the system. It's also going to help you uh, recover from the condition as uh, you seek medical attention or advice from your doctor if at all it persists. Okay, So don't take these advices as a substitute to your medical advice. Consult your doctor anytime you have a challenge and anytime you wish to recover from uh, erectile dysfunction. Also, my views are not to substitute the drugs and the prescriptions that you are on. My views are specifically for learning purposes, educational purposes, and also to open up your third eye so that you can see healthcare from all angles. Okay, So thank you so much for joining in. It's a pleasure always having you here. And that's just the definition of erectile dysfunction. I wanted to make that disclaimer because, of course, you already see what they are doing. Okay, So erectile dysfunction happens to every man, literally most men. Uh, and in the, in the modern generation, most men are suffering from this condition without even uh, knowing. Some men, you will work so hard to get a yam. You will spend a lot of money to get a yam. And then, when you're given a chance to pound that yam, it becomes a serious problem. Either you get an erection which is very weak, so you struggle to penetrate a woman. Or, when you penetrate a woman, it doesn't even last for long. Or, you penetrate a woman, and as you're pounding her, your penis starts to retract back. That is the most embarrassing situation. And I know men here will join in and let's talk about this. Okay, because uh, later on I'll bring on people on TikTok to just share their experiences. And then we have the conversation rolling. So most men, the shame that comes with erectile dysfunction cannot allow you as a man to actually share it out with other men. And you share it out with a lot of doctors. And doctors keep your secrets because it's professional to keep a man's secrets. But the reality is, it is so disturbing that men cannot fix this because the healthcare system has actually misled them to think that erectile dysfunction is normal, that is one. And number two, there is a solution in medicines. Now, as I always say, medicines for chronic conditions are only going to treat the symptoms. For example, erectile dysfunction medications, the sildenafil, I'll not mention the brand names, but if you know the brand names and if you use some of them, you can actually point them out in the comment section so that somebody gets to pick it up and know that this is a drug for erectile dysfunction. Symptoms. Okay, so if you have been on a drug for erectile dysfunction, I don't want to add symptoms there, I'll just put it in quotes. But if you've been on those drugs, the blue pills, you know them, those drugs were designed for hypertension. So what they do is they actually dilate blood vessels. But before I even talk about those drugs, allow me to explain what, where are we getting this erectile dysfunction from. Number one, the major culprit has always been the sugar. So as you eat that sugar, what you're doing is you're causing a thickening in the walls of the blood vessel. We've explained this before. When that wall is thickening, it starts to narrow. The blood vessels start to narrow. And as those blood vessels narrow, the blood flow towards the penis starts to uh, go low. So there's low supply of blood towards your penis. But remember this, that you need blood flow towards your penis for you to get an erection. Because the penis has a sponge-like tissue that has to soak with blood. Once it soaks with blood... Now it can be easier for you to get that erection. Because if you put a sponge inside water, it soaks with that water and then becomes stiff. That is the same concept that is happening in erection. Okay? And most men are experiencing this. Only that is the shame that is coming with this cannot allow men to share it openly. This is the same thing that is happening to women. When they go outside the country to do liposuction or a gastric balloon, they will never share their experiences after that procedure. Because they spend a lot of money going to lose weight, going to do those procedures, and when they come back, they realize, oh, they only lost about 5 to 10 kgs in about 4 months, and then afterwards, they never lose any more kilos. And once that happens, the shame that is coming with that, the fact that they've spent a lot of money, they've done these surgeries, and they were so excited that they'll come out one day in fitting clothes and they tell the public, I am now this figure 8. The shame that comes with that cannot allow them to come out in the public and tell you their procedures failed. This is the same thing that is happening to men. And you realize there was a hospital that was actually advertising for surgical uh, correction of erectile dysfunction. That they can do a surgery to you. <laughs> that surgery will help you get your erection back. But of course, they, are, they never talk about fixing the cause. They are just talking about fixing the symptoms. 
So the surgery is fixing symptoms. So this is the point. So when blood flow towards the penis is limited, now you don't have a, an erection. And also remember, there is a psychological aspect to erection. Once your psychology is off, my friend, however much you try, you will not get that erection. Number three, there is nervous transmission from the brain towards the penis. And anything, physical injury, medicines, sugar, because sugar actually kills the nerves, will give you a problem because now you will not get the erection because nervous transmission towards the penis to stimulate erection muscles is not there. So sugar is an enemy to any man who is experiencing erectile dysfunction. Number two, you've been taking that sugar, so therefore you've occluded blood vessels that actually supply your penis. Once that is happening, another problem is coming in. And above all, your psychology is literally off. You are getting into this sex nervous, anxious, or rather depressed. So you're getting in this for the wrong reasons. One, you just want to ejaculate because the lady has a very fine ass. You just want to ejaculate. So your reasons for getting into this yam is wrong. And then number two, you're so quick to ejaculate and you've been ejaculating all through, even uh, on masturbation. And we'll talk about how masturbation and pornography are actually killing the generation right now. And the system is actually killing us through that because even if you try to find out information about erectile dysfunction on the media, on mainstream books, on research, put that in quotes, you will never find it because they have made sure that they regulate the information that is coming out concerning masturbation because their intention is to weaken the man. So as they make you weak through uh, giving you all this medication, these surgical procedures and making you fat through eating unhealthy foods, they also give you solutions in medicines which actually cause more, more problems. We'll actually talk about uh, uh, the lipid lowering drugs. So once we talk about that, you start to understand how the system actually set us up for failure. But we don't have any excuse. As a man, your, your role, among provision, protection, your other role to a woman or your woman is to satisfy her sexually. So there's no excuses. Now I put up a post uh, uh, some days back and men were so angry. When I talk about masturbation, men get so angry. Culprits get so angry because in the modern generation, Three out of five men are obese. Four out of five men are actually masturbating. And the annoying part is that men can actually have sex with their woman in bed, fail to satisfy this woman because of weak erections, but run to the bathroom and still masturbate to just get satisfaction. This is absurd. Now, allow me to, before, I, <laughs> before this gets heated, Allow me to put out my uh, consultation contact as always. Uh, remember, the week that is starting on 25th all the way to 29th, we are going to be in Nairobi for our always effective and physical consultations. So kindly be part of that. Uh, our consultation contact is 0707, 07 again, then 4722. Let me just pin that here on uh, YouTube and also on TikTok before we continue. Now this is going to be interesting, this is going to be provoking, and I know that, I know this is going to be very provoking. And we hope that men can actually come out clean and tell us. So I'm pinning that contact on all platforms, 0707 22 Good. That is our consultation contact, you can call in. And make sure that you get your, your book, your slot for 25th all the way to 29th. That week has to be booked because some of you are already booking and asking me, when are you coming back to Nairobi? That's the contact now. So if you use that contact, we will have a very good interactions uh, in Nairobi, um, bringing healthcare near you, of course. And that's what I do for a living. Good. You can also use that contact to book your consultation online. We do it. And those who have interacted with us will share their success stories even tomorrow. So be prepared for tomorrow because tomorrow we have our testimonial Tuesdays back. How awesome is that? We have our testimonial Tuesdays back, so bring your testimony. Let's inspire other people to be even better. We also have a Telegram channel that is running up and running, very active. It's called Health and Wellness Sport. So be quick to join it because there is where we share information without filtering anything. Okay? So good. So yeah, a man will pound 
her woman his woman on bed lack to satisfy or miss or, or miss out on satisfying her in bed but still move to the bathroom and masturbate because masturbation is a very serious problem in erectile dysfunction so as i'll be talking about the causes of erectile dysfunction you will get to understand deeper how masturbation actually messes your system up and on the causes of erectile dysfunction which is the major part of the shaming part of the erectile uh, of the sexual health in men two causes are here one is the psychological cause so it's all here it's all in your head and two is the metabolic factor or the metabolic causes when i talk about metabolic i'm talking about the diseases like diabetes hypertension stroke when i talk about psychological i'm also talking about some diseases like epilepsy like alzheimers like parkinsons of course there are things that we have like trauma but trauma does not play a very major part here because <laughs> not unless it's very very psychological so i'll classify those into uh, different uh, those two groups but then i'll talk about each group and the diseases or uh, the factors that are under those groups so welcome aboard uh, people on tiktok thank you so much for joining in so if there's somebody you know who is suffering from this condition be kind enough to share this live to him bring them on board we want to change their lives for the better okay awesome 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 thank you so much for 111 people on tiktok if you're on these platforms enjoying free content be quick to like the live so that it gets to other people so that other people gets this information the same way you're getting it and it shall be amazing i will also talk about the bodybuilders and the steroid use in erectile dysfunction why do bodybuilders uh, have small penis or is it penis or penises whichever the case why do bodybuilders have low libido what is the cause is it even true why do skinny people also have the same same problems how does masturbation affect your day-to-day -day life in relation to erectile dysfunction so what causes this because since we've understood the sugar is the one that is blocking blood flow towards the penis and also sugar is the one that is killing nerve supply towards the penis why don't we do out, out, away with sugar because that is the major cause and you will actually realize that most of the conditions that are here that i've mentioned here as i was doing the research and the studies for this you will realize that most of those conditions are actually coming from diets so this is actually a dietary condition is that not amazing is a dietary condition so as you think that when you walk to the bar on friday and drink that favorite beer there's a beer that is actually known for giving men strength in bed <laughs> my people on youtube i think you have an idea of this because we've mentioned it before so is there if you know of that beer that actually makes a man stronger even your woman knows it because when you get weak erection your woman prefers to bring that that beer to you and once you've eaten your nyama choma now it's time for you to take that beer so that you can get a strong erection and pound her to the fullest so now we've shifted your, your 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 issues to this beer so now beer is your family or your marriage savior it happens some of you say weed when i smoke bang i am so activated and i pound my my wife to satisfaction daktari nakumbuka ile 2 weeks ago i took some weed and i pounded my woman and i think that thing has a solution <laughs> Stop being delusional. Stop being delusional, my friend. It's just psychological. Okay? Just the same way that there's a man somewhere who is actually strong enough to pound I am to satisfaction. But just simple words of a woman telling the man that you're weak in bed makes this guy so weak in bed, like literally. So whatever you believe, you become. There are men who have been broken down by these statements. that you're so weak in bed but the same same woman who is telling you that you pounded her yesterday for about an hour you wasted a lot of energy and then you went ahead and ejaculated aimlessly because of course men still consider ejaculation uh, as orgasm that's why men are so weak nowadays men are ejaculating by the way do you think that modern man the modern man is weak or do you think the modern man is stronger as compared to the traditional man 
What is your view? Do you think the modern man is growing weaker or stronger? Do you think the internet has made men sharper or dumber? Are they dumber or are they sharper? The internet has a lot of issues. You have porn on your, on your hand. Nowadays, every site is actually hypersexualized. You don't need to go far to see a woman naked. Nowadays, even weaker men are actually undressing their pregnant women and posting on social media. So you don't need to go any, any further because now pregnancy is the new nudity. You don't need to go any further to just see a naked woman. As compared to when we were growing up, seeing a woman's thighs was eh, a story of the town. And dressing that woman for sex. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, you miss out on sex with one woman. There's another who is very available. There are three who are actually chasing you for the same, same sex. So you're spoiled with options. You're actually wondering. Ah, I. <laughs> and then there are songs that are actually making you even weaker. That the, There's a song that says, the one that you love, love somebody else. And now you become, oh, yeah, yeah. let me just pound these yams left, right, and center. Because the one who I love does not love me back. Now listen. Take this to the bank. Men. Women only respect and submit to a strong man. Men are the ones who love women. Now, I know this will bring a lot of issues, but this is the truth. The order of life is God, men, and women, and children. So, love flows from God to the man, to the woman, and then to the children. Same as character and behavior. The other way around is respect and submission. Now YouTube have allowed me that now will be the good time to insert ads. Really now? Really now? You want to just kill our influence? There is no problem. We will allow you to kill our influence. But you cannot kill the message. The message is already out there. Eh? However much you want to make it look like we are controversial. No, YouTube is crazy. YouTube makes people think that we are very controversial. We are not controversial. We just share insight, insights on things that uh, most of your doctors don't share. Good. So at least we are now uh, at par. So this is the reality. The reality is that pornography, masturbation, and all these sexual ex experiences have actually been put closer to you through your phone. We have porn sites. We have, uh, we have dating sites. And it has made it even weaker. And men are thinking that women can ever love them. But listen, women only know how to love products of their womb. Again, that will look like a controversial statement. But the reality is Love for a woman is what she experiences with her children. Love to a woman is what she experiences with her children. That's the only, that's the only true love, if that exists. The only true love is between a woman and her children. But a woman to a man, that will be always respect or submission. Depending on how you can provide, you can protect, and you can show her some form of leadership. And then you can pound her arm. Sometimes they wake up very chaotic and they're literally all over. But sex humbles them. So imagine she's chaotic, she's all over, breaking things here and there, she's so moody. And the only thing that needs to cool her nerves down is the sex. But you cannot have an erection. And now, of course, we'll produce excuses. You know, I'm focusing on my goals. You know, uh, if it was not, if you just... <laughs> If you found me yesterday after the gym, hmm? <laughs> and that only comes in after you've sucked your bag and realized, oh, my blue pill is not around. My blue pill is not around. Now it has to, now, now you have to make sense. So you have to create all excuses around it so that she just understands. But let me be honest with you. They will only understand for the shortest period of time. Just the same way they will only provide for the shortest period of time. And the reason why they are doing that is because they are hopeful that the situation will change for the better. So you're there hoping that this woman understands me and she will understand me for a lifetime because I'm the husband. Listen. <laughs> they can only understand you for the shortest period of time and with the hope that everything changes for the better. And you're still surviving on the, on the hope that no other man has already uh, pounded your yam. So you're still surviving. You're just, you're on resuscitation mode. <laughs> you are on a gas mask. Once it's, once it's pulled down, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gasping for air. So where are we getting the erectile dysfunction? Apart from just mentioning sugar in general, these are the causes of erectile dysfunction. 
above all they are classified into five so i'll talk about these five pole pole as we go slow but surely until we get to the end and then we start asking you bring in people to just have a conversation with us so number one it has to be an underlying health condition or a medical condition so you cannot just get an erectile dysfunction just because sugar was thrown in just because the processed carbohydrate was thrown in or honey no you can't you will get erectile dysfunction because of an underlying health condition that is actually caused by that sugar do you get the connection so sugar is the major one but now sugar will give you a condition that will actually cause you the ed what are these conditions number one is hormonal imbalance now when you hear the word hormonal imbalance what they are actually telling you as a man is you have low testosterone at least women have the two progesterone and estrogen so when they are told you have hormonal imbalance they're actually being told that you have a problem with either progesterone or estrogen they also have testosterone but in lower level so they can also be told you have a problem with testosterone because higher levels of testosterone they start to grow beards and get hirsutism but for the men because this is why we are here Uticus is in the building. Uticus, how are you, bro? Welcome aboard, my bro. So, if you have an underlying condition that is hormone related, that is low testosterone, or rather, if you have high DHT. Now, remember, as a man, you only utilize 2% of your circulating testosterone. So, you can have a lot of testosterone in your body, but you will only utilize 2% of it. What does that mean? That means the rest of the testosterone that is circulating in the system will be metabolized, it will be broken down. And the active metabolite for testosterone is DHT, dihydrotestosterone. So what does dihydrotestosterone do to the man? Baldness, prostate cancer, prostate enlargement, erectile dysfunction. So if you're that person who actually activates the breakdown of DHT to get uh, testosterone to get uh, DHT, which is actually the active and toxic metabol metabolite of testosterone, you will experience these problems. You will experience these problems. That is one. And what actually causes conversion of testosterone to DHT? Number one is obesity. High estrogen in the system. Number two is endocrine, endocrine disruptors. We have so much endocrine disruptors in the system right now. Starting with the hormonal contraceptives that women use, and then they urinate in the rivers. And then you take that water through the tap waters, and you use it either to bath so it gets through the skin, or some of you drink the tap water. But some situations you cannot avoid. But that's the reality. When you get that access to those hormonal contraceptives through drinking water, you are actually becoming a woman because those are progestins and estrogens. They are not even estrogen hormones. They are actually progestins. They are synthetic, made in the laboratory. So you start raising your estrogen levels, and that is a problem to you as a man. When you grow fat, fat has a way of blocking the conversion of estrogen to testosterone because that happens under an enzyme that is called aromatase. So if you block conversion of estrogen to testosterone, what are you becoming? Your levels of estrogen start going up. You start becoming a woman. You grow man boobs. You grow the hips and the buttocks. You become very chaotic and emotional. And that is the beginning of problems because you will now have erectile dysfunction. So estrogen in men is also a very dangerous thing. So as a man, you have to put your estrogen on the low so that you don't become chaotic. You don't have those man boobs. And then we start helping you to reverse the man boobs. Men, please listen. <laughs> You are allowed to like the life, no problem. Just let other men who are getting into being women come on to the life and we learn together. And I know, 90% of men have experienced erectile dysfunction at some point. All of us have had a chance to get these problems. And you get the chance to pound a woman. You've been longing for this chance. You've wasted money to take her on debts. You've impressed her and now the chance is here. And imagine, and the most annoying part of this is when you get your penis inside the vagina and then it starts to retract back. My friend, in your head you'll be thinking about the best sex you've ever had with another woman. So now, sex stops being about this woman. You're just using her as a sex object. Now it's about the woman in your head. Now you're thinking about the best, in quotes, the best pornography video you've ever watched so that you can get your erection back. 
most men know what I'm talking about. It's just the truth. Lois Makomere is saying, hi, we always say baldness is genetic. genetic. <laughs> baldness is actually testosterone being converted to DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Of course, it has a genetic link, but it's very minimal. And I always tell you, when you hear genes, one, two to ten percent is played by genes. And number two, two to five percent of diseases are actually genetic. Two to five percent. So don't allow the system to lie to you and make you a slave by telling you this is genetics. This is the same thing they tell you when they don't know what they're talking about. It's either genetics or idiopathic. Idiopathic means I don't know. We don't know the cause. So you can imagine your doctor telling you, you are diabetic, but it is idiopathic. We don't know the cause because your pancreas is functional. Your cells are sensitive to insulin, but we don't know what is causing. But the same same doctor goes ahead and writes a prescription for drugs for diabetes. How many men have gone to a doctor you have used sildenafil in all forms. You have used tadalafil, and men know these drugs. I don't want to mention the trade names. You have used those two drugs, but there's no improvement. And the only option your doctor tells you is now, you know, we have to add on the dose because now we don't know the cause. We've tried these drugs, and these are the only drugs that we know uh, that are causing you, the, uh, that can actually help you recover from this condition. But since it is getting worse, we don't know what to do. So we don't know the cause. How many of you have heard that? A lot of men are suffering in silence. Imagine a urologist at the apex of sexual health in men, at the apex of reproductive health, but still tells you, I don't know what you're suffering from, but I'll write you these antibiotics just in case there's a disease. But doesn't ask you about diets, doesn't ask you about sleep patterns, doesn't ask you about vitamin D, doesn't even take a test for vitamin D deficiency, doesn't ask you if you walked on the sun, doesn't ask you about family and stress levels. Doesn't ask you about any underlying health condition and the medication that you're using. But still goes ahead and writes a prescription for drugs for erectile dysfunction. Higher doses of drugs for erectile dysfunction. By the way, did you know that that blue pill, that Viagra, actually somebody who discovered sildenafil, Somebody who discovered sildenafil was actually trying to study the effects of this pill in hypertension. And did you know that sildenafil was actually used to treat pulmonary hypertension? Underline the word hypertension. So it was used to lower blood pressures. Did you know that? And when these men came to hospital to pick their drugs, of course, a prescription refill for their drugs for hypertension, they went home and they got erection. So it was discovered by chance. It's called serendipity. So they went home and when they took the drugs, their blood pressures came down and they pounded their arms to satisfaction. So now women were so interested in this drug. Like how... How is it possible that my gentleman has not had an erection because of this condition that he has, but now they have been given this drug, and this drug is actually making them to pound us to satisfaction. What is happening with this drug? So actually the women were the ones who are going back to hospital to pick these drugs for this gentleman, so that the doctor does not change the drug. <laughs> well, <laughs> women were the ones who are going to pick drugs for their... This is a time when families came together. <laughs> For at least a common goal. Families came together for a common goal. And the common goal was, now let's go to hospital and pick these drugs for our men. So that they pound us to satisfaction. And they will benefit from it anyway. As they benefit from it uh, through lowering blood pressure, we also benefit by being pounded. <laughs> Where? <laughs> so that drug was discovered by chance. And that's the reason why most men right now, they die in action. So you go take a, that sildenafil, maybe five, 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams, because you've now been used to 50 milligrams. And this is happening to our youths. Somebody who can go to the gym and fix their health. Somebody who has the capability to fix their kitchen. But they run and buy these drugs every evening. And then they take these drugs, forgetting that this drug was designed for hypotension. So it was designed for hypertension, to lower blood pressure, sorry. Now, since it was designed for to lower, to lower blood pressure, if your blood pressure is normal, what do you think will happen? 
Hello? If your blood pressure is normal and you take a drug for high to bring down your blood pressure, what do you think will happen? Oh. <laughs> do you have the answer? What do you think will happen if you are having normal blood pressure? So your blood pressure has never been stubborn. And now you have normal blood pressure. And you go ahead and take a drug that is designed to lower your blood pressure. What do you think will happen? <laughs> yeah? Gentlemen, I'm not denying, I'm not, I'm not saying no to your drugs. You can go ahead and use them. But I want to give you the adequate and appropriate information that when you use that pill, you use it in the appropriate way. And then, let your woman do the work. How many men, politicians, heavy people in government, how many do we know, media personalities, how many of them do we know, even doctors that have died in the field of action, just trying to impress that woman. And then your blood pressure's poop down. Now you're into hypertension and you're still trying to <laughs> you're still trying to impress. Oh my goodness. Hey, you die as a soldier. There's a saying in my language that says, a bull dies with grass in the mouth. <laughs> and that men they die in the living room or the sitting room. There's no man who is supposed to die in the bedroom. Men die in the sitting room. So that saying basically means <laughs> that a bull never gives up, so it will die still chewing. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Our bulls die chewing. So you just, you just go into a shock. You go into hypotension and your organs just shut down once. And you're gone. And we will celebrate you because you died in action. Believe me, we will celebrate you. As much as we will take the, the woman to court and all this time, we want the woman to pay. She's not the problem. You just did not match her energy and you decided, now it's time for me to at least top up my energy. Hey, and oh, the gentleman has rested, but the soldier died in the field of action. Anyway, <laughs> we move. So that is hormonal imbalance. Doctor, since I stopped using atovastatin, I'm now perfect. Thank you so much, Ephraim Kabethi. I'm going to talk about atovastatin and the lipid-lowering drugs and how they affect or affect your erection. If you're on these lives and you're somebody who is still using lipid-lowering drugs, cholesterol-lowering drugs, you're wasting your time. So I'll talk about that. Thank you so much for raising that to us. So that is hormonal uh, imbalance, low testosterone and high estrogen. Number two, the metabolic diseases. Of course, on the list, diabetes can never lack because it's a sugar problem. Imagine with all the research and all the finances that have been pumped into diabetes, they have never found a reason to define it adequately. Do you think they're stupid? Do you think they don't know what they're doing? That they still tell you that diabetes is chronic elevated high blood sugars. They still talk about that. Chronic elevated high blood sugars, which is basically a symptom of diabetes. It's not diabetes, it's a symptom. So diabetes is in your cells, not your blood, it's in your cells. What you're seeing in blood is just what is coming back or spilling back from the cells because of insulin resistance. They have even classified diabetes, but they don't have an appropriate definition because if they had the definition, they will have the treatment. Our own diabetes guidelines are actually sponsored by the big pharma. So how do you expect to recover from diabetes? How? So diabetes is there because sugar blocks blood flow towards the penis. Also sugar kills the nerves that supply the penis. Also sugar kills your brains. So therefore the transmission of nervous impulses from your brain to the penis, zero. Even the ability of you just comprehending that this is a sexual process, zero. But the same, same sugar will give you excuses. <laughs> <laughs> why you did not satisfy this yam so you can remember you did not satisfy the yam but you can't you can't fix the cause cancer is here and when i talk about cancer i'm talking about cancer and chemotherapy now did you know that chemotherapy cancer is also another disease that they have never defined adequately did you know that drugs for cancer actually cause cancer did you know that of course if you've been in, on my platforms for the longest period of time you know that it's the truth one side effect of cancer drugs is to cause cancer. Look, you should see how pharmacists prepare those chemotherapeutic drugs before they inject in a patient. 
they are so covered with a double gown, they have a head shield, they have a mask, they have double gloves, and then they have a shield. They make it through that fume chamber. If you knew uh, in chemistry in high school, you know the fume chamber where we used to uh, uh, basically make the reactive uh, uh, products. So they make it in a fume chamber where the whole glass here is covering you here. Then it has holes. So you put your hands in there and the medicines are inside that glass. So it's like you're seated this way. So you're trying to fix or to mix those drugs from inside there. Now imagine the shock on my face when I'm thinking that these drugs that I'm avoiding have to go in a blood vessel to somebody who is waiting for me on that chair or on that bed. As a professional, you're even afraid. You're even scared. So just imagine that. Like as a professional, you're scared to mix this drug because you think if they get in contact with your skin, they will actually cause cancer. But these same same drugs, you want to convince that person who is sitting or sleeping on that bed that they are going to get better. Hello? <laughs> now it's time for you to fix your kitchen. Simply don't... Please fix your kitchen. I don't want to talk more. <clears throat> this is the point. So cancer medications actually target the rapidly multiplying cells. And one of the rapidly multiplying cells are in the mouth. That's why when you burn your mouth with tea, you recover so fast. You don't even realize it. The next day you're okay. Because the epithelial cells that lie in your mouth recover so fast. So the, cell, the, the cancer therapy actually targets the rapidly multiplying uh, cells. Now, one of also the cells that multiply rapidly is actually the cells that are in your gonads. The sperm cells, the ova. And also the entire reproductive system is actually targeted by these chemotherapeutic agents. So when you have that, when you have that chemotherapeutic agent getting into your system, you're actually killing your gonads. So what do you expect? How will you get an erection? Forget it. You will also get uh, low libido. You will also get, sperm, is it sperm, what, what do they call it? Low sperm count. Yeah. But low sperm count is a topic for another day. This is just for erectile dysfunction. So cancer is there. Again, obesity. Now, whoever lied to men that having a pot belly is a sign of wealth, that person should be tied on a pole, naked and whipped on the buttock seriously. Whoever told you that that pot belly is a sign of health messed you up totally. Yes, Azuspamia. Thank you so much. Uh, this is who? This is Kolige. Is it Kolige? Yes. Knowledge is power. Do your mouth. Yes, do your mouth. As you sit there and expect, expect drugs to change your life for what you've been eating. So you eat very bad foods and drugs will come through for you. Are you crazy? You cannot eat bad foods. You cannot involve yourself in unhealthy lifestyles, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, and then expect as you walk into that hospital, medicines will change what diets messed. That is not happening. It is not happening. It will never happen. So dietary conditions are supposed to be fixed by dietary solutions. Not medicines. And as we talk about that, just simply realize that that drug, that blue pill that you use, was actually designed by the same same company that designed the lipid lowering drugs. We will talk about that. So just be patient, okay? So right now, men think being fat is actually swag. You've seen there's a guy on TikTok who is actually marketing the betting companies. He's, I think he's a tout or something with a very big tummy and he eats like literally everything. There was another guy who was, this is Kekeli Kafui, thank you for uh, 10 pounds. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Kekeli. There's another gentleman who was actually shaking his belly while dancing and he was going viral for all these, the gentleman from Turkey. And all of us were excited. Do you remember there was also a kid, a boy, who was so fat and the mother was actually shooting videos of this child and the child made us laugh, yes. But the bigger picture was, are we seeing obesity here? And the child died, unfortunately. So all of us were laughing at the videos, the child just justifying food, snatching food from the mother. Do you remember that guy? That boy? Yes, this gentleman is saying it, Makandi. Makandi is saying, that is, that is the guy I'm talking about. A guy who is actually a tout with a very big tummy, weighing a lot of ages, and I actually saw a video, him saying that he can eat up to 2,000 shillings every single day. Now, that is amazing. That is amazing. We are so happy. Ah, we are so happy for you. You can eat that. Ah, yes, we are so happy. 
But I can assure you that betting company will not be there when you will be having an our WhatsApp group ya kuchangisha pesa ya kwenda India. Obesity is a serious problem in the modern generation. Every person you see has a pot belly, has some fat on, has some hips, some buttocks, men with man boobs. It is becoming so common until it becomes it's, it's actually looking like it's the new norm. Like if you become fat, you're okay. In our village, a fat man is considered as the most wealthy. The most wealthy is a man who is fat. Now I remember when I was a fat man with a double neck here and a double chin with a tie and I'm like I'm finding it even hard to breathe. These are the same men that you women sleep with on beds and these men cannot sleep. There is <laughs> there is no like literally and and women are getting used to this like if a man is snoring you're getting used to it it's okay. He's okay. Your man is snoring from the time he gets into bed until the time he wakes up. I wonder how <laughs> I wonder how you can sleep with that the whole night. And now women are getting so angry because not only are you snoring here, you did not satisfy me in bed. So it's a serious problem. Obesity is actually messing our men. Why are you snoring, dog? There's nothing I've not done. <laughs> there, <laughs> there is nothing I've not done, Mickey. There is nothing I have not done. Now, if you're not on my YouTube, it's called Health and Wellness Sport. It is where health lives. Believe me, you people on TikTok. Join my YouTube channel and subscribe. Actually, if you subscribe, you will help us grow and we will grow together as a team. Thank you so much for the support that you've shown us on TikTok. If you've not subscribed on this platform, please do. Listen, the, most of the situations that I talk about, I've been there. I've been 102 kgs. So I know how it feels to be obese. You are literally struggling. That's the moment your mother will tell you it's time for you to marry. It's time for you to bring us grandchildren. Now you've grown, now you have this job is taking you so well. Now this is the best job you've ever experienced. Please marry. Please bring us somebody here. We want somebody. And men succumb to that pressure. Now that woman is coming in with the diets that she used to cook because the mother trained her to cook the bad diets. Then she comes in, and when she comes in, she cooks the same food. And now your mother helps her to perfect. My friend, hey, when you get into a pit, it's time to stop digging. Does snoring contribute to this uh, condition, Doc? When you're snoring anduku, you're basically obese. Your muscles, your, your throat muscles are actually getting weaker because of obesity. And the reason why I brought in the snoring part is because of obesity. So obesity is a serious problem because the fatter you grow, the more estrogen you get as a man. Even women, the fatter you grow, the more estrogen you bring into yourself. Now that estrogen is going to expose you to uh, estrogen dominance, which basically tells you, uh, what do we call it? What is happening here? Okay, which basically tells you fibroids, endometriosis, imbalance in hormones and uh, painful menstruation, infertility. Cervical and breast cancer are coming in because of that estrogen. But most of you don't know that. You don't. And now there's even a PCOS Foundation Kenya. There's also a Fibroids Foundation Kenya. There's also a Diabetic Society Kenya. There's all these people calling you chubby, thick thighs, and you get excited about it. But they are just telling you indirectly that you're obese and fat. But right now, if you, it's a sensitive topic, you just call a woman fat. Oh, it's all chaos. You call a man fat. Oh, it's all chaos. This is not chaos for you calling them fat. This is just them expressing their inadequacies. They are full of insecurities and inadequacies, but they don't want to fix it. So until the day that we, we will take responsibility... Ah, it shall be chaotic. It shall be chaotic, my friends. As you grow fat, you're bringing in problems. So simply lose weight. If you don't want people to call you fat, lose weight. It's that easy. There is nothing fancy with being fat. And do you know, being obese actually makes people look older. Did you know that? Look at my Facebook. Those, people, those women that I share their platform, those men that have lost weight on that platform, you will be so amused. You will actually want to lose weight tomorrow. You will be... <laughs> because fat makes you look older. It makes you look older. When you lose weight, you look younger. So men, start losing weight because obesity is a problem. Another condition that... Remember, we're still talking about the underlying health condition. We also have sickle cell. Sickle cell anemia, actually, those red glasses that look like a sickle. 
So they, they occlude your blood vessels and blood cannot flow towards the penis. So sickle cell anemia is actually another condition that we, I think we should take alive and talk about. And that is a, another condition that brings you erectile dysfunction. Apart from those, apart from obesity, cancer, hypertension and diabetes and sickle cell, of course, there are other conditions that kill the nerves. That is Parkinson's, that is epilepsy, that is psychosis. So you don't expect somebody who has epilepsy to get an appropriate erection. You don't expect somebody who is depressed to get an adequate erection. And this person who is depressed, and I told you, clinical depression is a myth. Depression is there. Yes, feeling low, moods of feeling low are there. But when you go to hospital and you're diagnosed of clinical depression, they're lying to you. They just want you to start taking uh, those drugs. And those drugs will actually cause you erectile dysfunction and obesity. So drugs for depression actually cause depression and suicidal thoughts as a side effect. Drugs for depression cause your erectile dysfunction and they also add you weight. So that is double tragedy for erection. So as you pop that pill, oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'm depressed because I lost a job. Simply find another job or create your own job. As you don't, you fail to accept death because your loved one died and you don't want to accept it. The more you resist, the more it persists. Once you accept, that's an antidote to resistance. You're good to go. You will not pop a pill. But as the more you continue being depressed because somebody died, the more you get depressed. And now you give us a chance to make sure that we tell you you are now clinically depressed and here is an antidepressant. Oh my goodness. Start taking that antidepressant and see what is going to happen to you. More depression is loading. Another health condition like stroke and cardiovascular diseases, like heart attack. Of course, these are people who, if they get a chance to pound a yam and then they overdo it, with a heart attack, <laughs> with a heart attack, hey, my friends, hey, women will experience serious problems here. Number two, so remember number one cause was underlying health condition. Just what I just talked about. Number two, we have medicines. And I've talked about medicines already. Which medicines do you think cause erectile dysfunction? And if you're on this platform and you're not liking it, ah, you must be very mean. You must be very mean. If you're on TikTok, kindly join my YouTube channel. It's called Health and Wellness Sport. It's the best place to be. And I'm about to bring in some people on TikTok to have a conversation. Today is going to be a blast. My friends, we are back with the bang. We will do this. Tomorrow we also have Testimonial Tuesday. So prepare your testimony. Share it with us so that we can inspire more people. Okay? And be our advocates on the ground. As we grow on the ground, we become uh, uh, untouchable. Sleeping pills, yes, it's called amitriptyline. Amitriptyline is actually an antidepressant. <laughs> yeah? An antidepressant. So those are the drugs that will cause you actually a real problem. So you're taking them to get statins, yes. Tramadol causes actually uh, uh, some sedation and also respiratory tract failure. So if you're taking morphine, if you're taking tramadol and all these narcotic drugs, what they do is they suppress your breathing centers in the brain. So guess what is going to happen? Somebody who is actually pounding a yam requires enough blood flow, requires enough oxygen, and that's why you, you actually in an activity. You require a lot of oxygen and nutrients supplied all over the body. But imagine suppressing the, the respiration centers, the breathing centers in your brain. What is going to happen? Of course, you're loading a coma. You are loading a coma. We cannot afford that. Men, listen. As we fix men, we know we will fix women. Edward Muchekeho, welcome to the Doctor's Panel. This is a new member on YouTube. Ah, I salute you, gentlemen. Welcome to the Doctor's Panel. You'll get exclusive content before other people get to share or to see it. So we welcome you aboard. That's a new member. Ah, this is awesome. And don't fail to be on these lives uh, most of the time because you will miss out on a lot. Sometimes we can't put this in a video that we teach on a board. It's, it's hard to put this information out there. Because of course they'll come after it so quick. But this one, you get it first hand. So medicines like antidepressants, antipsychotics. So people who, have, who are crazy, antipsychotics. Drugs like antihistamines. When you take that antihistamine, you're thinking you're going to heal from that flu or that skin problem. You're going to get problems. That allergy that you keep on sneezing every time. By the way, I used to sneeze every morning. Boy, I used to carry four handkerchiefs, my friend. Let me tell you, I have, I have had my better part of suffering. When I preach this gospel, it's not because of any reason. When I started a YouTube channel, the major reason why I started a YouTube channel was because I wanted to just 
come back later when I'm aging and just look at that YouTube channel and think, oh my goodness, I did a good job. That was my target. My target was not to, to pour this information out there and everybody just gets to jump onto it and get their, their health in order. I didn't even like TikTok on the first, in the first place. I used to think, ah, what type of platform is this? This is a platform where women just shake their ass. Listen, until I realized the impact that I'm giving or getting to people, that's when I became serious with these things. I have suffered. I used to take a drug called Celestamine, but it never worked. That time I was living in Thika, and I was working at KNH. So you can imagine in the morning as people are sleeping, I'm busy sneezing, and I used to blame everything around me. I used to blame the car that I'm, I'm the matatu that I'm in at that moment in time. I used to blame the bed sheets. I buy new ones, there's a problem. I'm blaming the new ones now. I used to blame perfumes. Anytime you pass by me, I'm like, ah, tia. <laughs> and then now I start to blame you now. You're my new blame. <laughs> if I didn't meet that woman, if I didn't meet that guy, I wouldn't have sneezed. My, my friend, by the time it's 11, and guys who I worked with uh, at KNH can actually ascertain this, by the time it got to 11, all my four handkerchiefs were wet. They were wet. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 hey. And I never took responsibility. At that moment, I'm 102 kgs, like literally. What am I doing at 102 as a man? Was I a man or a male? <laughs> Was I a man or a male? <laughs> and of course, there's somebody, somebody's daughter somewhere was actually disappointed. <laughs> Where? Ay, 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 ay. Sometimes you look back at your journey and you start, you start thinking. When you see somebody who is at that level, of course you start to imagine, hey, is this guy going through the same problems that he used to go through? <laughs> And then now you have to lie on you have to play the victim because because you're, you're wondering uh, if if at all I'm this way, of course this <laughs> this lady will leave. So you start playing a victim, <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was a bad experience with the patient today. You know, I saw a kid dying today, and it was so it was so emotional. I don't feel good. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sex has nothing to do with that. Yeah. And this this chick is vibrant, very young, and now she wants to show you that she actually knows this game, that she just watched two porn videos somewhere. <laughs> so she wants to exercise that with you, my friend. Hey, hey, man can tell you this, man can tell you this, it gets chaotic. You will blame that woman. <laughs> and if you see her, you just get into a, a chum, you just take a corner and disappear because it's so shameful. So anyway, all of us have our weaknesses. But how you fix those weaknesses is actually the, the reason why you, you grow up to being a man. <laughs> so, sir, what helped you? Weight loss, my friend. Losing weight, the gym, eating healthy, bro. And the weird part is I had all these, I had all these things on my fingerprints. But I never, I never practiced any. I never practiced any. Just the same way most doctors have diabetes. Most doctors smoke. They drink alcohol chronically. Most doctors are depressed and are on antidepressants. They lack sleep. It's the same, same condition, bro. It's the same, same situation. It happens every now and then, everywhere. But how do you fix it? Because you have to take responsibility to fix it. You have to do that. Okay? About sneezing, how did you overcome? The same, same thing, bro. Lose weight. And some people think just because you're fat, Oh, just because you're thin from outside, you look very thin from outside, you can eat every food because you're trying to get fat, you're not getting fat, so you can eat everything. You are one person who is so misguided. Start fasting, you need it. So drug like uh, uh, cimetidine, cimetidine is actually a drug that was used for uh, uh, stomach ulcers, the gastric ulcers. Chemotherapy is also here, we've talked about it, so it's already here. Uh, there's another one that is CNS stimulants, those drugs for stimulation. Now, this is where people with uh, those people who chew Mira are, because Mira, actually called CAT, is actually uh, a CNS stimulant. Okay? What is this? Why are they telling me live will end?
What is happening here? TikTok is telling me that this live will end. Anyway, we will continue. Good, thank you. So this is what is happening. Those people who chew mirror, the cat. Cat has amphetamines. And amphetamines are CNS stimulants. So what they'll do is they'll stimulate your CNS. That's why you don't have, uh, you don't sleep. But they kill your erection. They kill your manhood. And now you use mira plus soda plus energy drinks. That is sugar <laughs> plus a stimulant. Double tragedy. So if you're a guy who smokes cigarettes, takes, drinks mira, takes cocaine and all these hard drugs, run away from them if you're suffering from this condition. Start changing your behavior. And above all, synthetic steroids. Now your favorite uh, gym instructor, the one who is torn and uh, looks built, lifts heavy, that is one person who is actually going to have problems. Now if you're on TikTok, kindly uh, like the live so that it can get to spread. It's, it's late night, so we can now break the rules. <laughs> Children are sleeping. So anyway, <clears throat> your, your steroids, the steroids that are used in the gym, the anabolic steroids, and also the protein shakes that are rich in fructose and they are rich in soy. Soy is actually estrogen. The steroids actually kill manhood. These bodybuilders who are so, they're actively bodybuilding. Those guys take in steroids to just boost muscle metabolism. But they end up getting low testosterone levels. And also the synthetic steroids are actually DHT. They are rich in DHT. What does DHT do to men? Problems. So as you aim to get that perfect physique, do it the adequate way and by the way even your instagram model the guy who is always running on instagram with gym and stuff and without a shirt those are protein shakes and steroids don't fall for that some of them are genetics yes we agree but the smallest percentage don't fall for that trap go to the gym the gym was not designed to make you look good for women the gym was designed to boost your testosterone the gym was designed to help you mimic the activities that we used to do traditionally that we don't do now digging or the farming generally squatting in the loo and most of you sit on a toilet so you don't even have a chance to squat so squatting pulling pushing pressing these are the things that we used to do traditionally that we don't do now so the gym came in to fix that but most of you now go to the gym after you've lifted the bicep you actually train the bicep and the chest only after you've lifted that bicep you are in this on the mirrors taking videos like you who goes to the shamba and takes videos in the shamba to post on Instagram? Who goes to the farm with the intention of coming back with a very good chest? Who? That basically tells you, you started this or you went in for the wrong reasons. So stay away from steroids. Even those ladies who are using steroid drugs to enlarge, to enlarge your hips, please stay away from that. Okay, and then number three. So number one was underlying health condition. Number two was medicines. And number three now is lifestyle. Of course, diets are here. Sugar, wheat products, seed oils, processed carbohydrates, that pizza. And nowadays, do you see what they have done? They have made sure that they bring this to your doorstep. They send that company. Hello, what is your favorite delivery company? <laughs> what is that company that brings pizza to your doorstep? Hello? There's a company that brings pizza at your doorstep. You don't need to move. You just need to order on phone. And they bring it to you. Yeah. Nowadays, they even have bikes. They are all over. There's no place they don't get to. They bring it at your doorstep. We even have Uber Eats, for heaven's sake. So you can just order and it's there. And you eat. And you sit there, watch your TV. You eat popcorns again. You drink yogurt. You drink tea. And you have a very beautiful woman who knows how to cook. And then cooks your food in seed oils. Cooks you the best chapatis. Because nowadays chapatis are actually ranked. If a woman knows how to make chapatis, that is a wife material. <laughs> if, if For the lawyers, if a woman knows how to make ugali, sometimes you take ugali and slap it on the wall. If it sticks on the wall, this is not... <laughs> this ugali is not okay. You just want the ugali to... When you hit the wall, it falls down. Ah. I, I, that's, a, that's a woman now you've approved. Ah, this one. Ah, I'm marrying this one. Perfect. So she knows how to cook ugali. Perfect. She knows how to make good chapatis that look like Claire's. Perfect. She's a good... She bakes very nice cakes. Perfect. 
then she knows how to deep fry mandazis and fish in seed oils are ah, perfect now you have a small job that you can afford uh, wheat wheat flour you can afford uh, sugar you can afford some fruits here and there you can afford soda and then you can bring home your favorite alcoholic drink and beer that beer that when you drink you get <laughs> your manhood in order ai all these things are getting are gouging in one system and you expect drugs will come and salvage your situation ah <laughs> eh, eh, okay so diets exercise zero exercise if you go to the gym you're busy running on a treadmill the whole night go to the gym and lift weights as a man don't go to the gym and run on a treadmill for 2 hours what are you doing and then after the treadmill you you have all this sweat all over and then you go home and put a ugali like that and your rice and beans or your chapati and beans eating all carbohydrates i mean why why did you go to the gym you went to burn fat uh, to burn the fat and to burn the calories and then you've come here you've taken double the calories that you burned in the gym it's a waste of time alcoholism smoking and drug abuse all those are under lifestyle and lifestyle actually is the one that plays the bigger role in this okay and then of course physical injury yeah there are people who have even physical problems when when they're having rough sex those people who get involved in pornography they're having rough sex those people who perform anal sex and by the way this is my personal view that if a man asks for anal sex from a woman that man is gay that is my personal view and i will stand by that there is no difference between the anus of a woman and the anus of a man so if a man asks for sex from his woman he is actually using you as a sex toy that one you can take to the bank and in this generation in this gen z generation where you don't know the difference between a man and a woman and this male goes ahead and asks for anal sex from you ladies ladies <laughs> the earlier the better the earlier the better and the weird part is women ask actually asking for anal sex from men ah <laughs> ah i i i let me leave it at that let me leave it at that so physical injury like uh, the surgery that is done when you're having a, a prostate enlarged or prostate cancer that surgery can actually bring you problems and by the way did you know did you see that what that was going rounds in the media that there's a hospital that is actually carrying out surgeries to help men recover from erectile dysfunction did you hear that and that surgery is uh, 800000 kenya shillings did you hear that <laughs> did you see it because when you're in this channel you will see it from far now they are marketing vasectomy through your celebrities and then the effects of vasectomy are not talked about they just take, talk about how vasectomy will help you prevent a woman from getting pregnant but no other thing they will never talk about any other thing and your celebrity is actually marketing this yep. the fifth one is actually anxiety and depression so the mental health issues okay the mental health issues this has to be fixed by you you fix your gut you fix your kitchen you fix your mental health that is just it now this is the moment when you bring in people to just share the experiences and this is the most interesting part of this live so people on youtube relax some day we will get to make uh, the logistics to make sure that we also share this live with people from uh, on youtube so allow me to bring in some people on tiktok kindly if you're on tiktok uh you can always uh share or or join the conversations by requesting to be part of this live and then we get to have this conversation i'm already seeing uh but i would love for the men to come in unfortunately when you talk about such a topic men start to run away when you get to talk about such a topic men don't like having engagements on this topic i don't know why uh Judith has requested to be on the live so let's see this is a sensitive topic and uh, apparently most people will not like to be here <laughs> but tomorrow don't forget tomorrow is uh, testimonial tuesday so drag your testimony on our platforms we will have the same same live at around 9 so we will share this and we will make sure that your testimonies are heard 
We also want you to allow us to record that and share it on our YouTube platforms so that uh, uh, others can get inspired by your story. This is how we learn, this is how we change lives for other people for the better, okay? So yeah, uh, everybody is running away. Now I realized when I talk about sensitive topics and uh, I go to the comment section, I realized most doctors will come in, will actually take my videos and make their own videos. And yes, it's just for testimony. So tomorrow is just testimonies, bro. The conversation continues on Wednesday, but tomorrow is just testimonies. Now, they use my videos, but when you call them in for an interview or a conversation or a debate, none of them is willing to run this debate with me. I don't know why. Is it because they are afraid or is it because there's something to hide? Because some of them will log into my live and when I invite them in, oh my goodness, you will never see them. So let's see our first uh, guest here is Wall Ball. Is it Wall Ball or Wall Ball? <coughs> let's see Wall Ball. Is, is, is your name Wall Ball or Wall Ball? It's Wall. It's Wall Ball. Yeah. Can I call you doctor? Pardon? I say, should I call you Dr. Health? Well, you can call me anything. My name is Lewis. What is your name? Oh, no. My name is Walball. Okay, Walball, welcome aboard. You are live on air, so talk to us. Okay. Uh, it's in a very good topic. Uh, I actually want a free advice, if, if possible. Uh, I don't shy away from my issues okay. or problems that I have. I happened to be 49 uh, three days ago. Okay. And I started having a problem when I was in my 39 years. Yes. And it cost me my marriage. Okay. But I didn't let it stress me out because life is still moving on. I have kids. I'm blessed. I have... Uh, my son is 22 now. Okay. But I want to know in the future, what can I do? Uh, I'm planning to get married to a younger lady. Maybe she'll be 27 years old. Okay. Uh, how, how, how long have you what? stayed alone? Uh, I've been nine years and seven months right now. Have you fixed what uh, was lacking in the previous relationship? Yes, that was a really, really issue because my partner was sexually active okay. than I do. Was your partner sexually yeah. active than you or were you having just a weakness? Uh, I, I have issue weakness. Actually, to be honest, I drink. I don't smoke, I don't use drugs, but I drink occasionally. Okay. Um, and, and like in weekend, I drink beer, liquor, anything. Okay. And what? I don't know if, if that contributes to that issue or not. What is your current body weight, sir? I'm 215 and then my height is 6'4". 215, that is pounds, right? Yes, uh, 215 pounds. I use American pounds, so uh, we, they call it pounds. So I don't know in kilograms. It could so, be 120. Yeah. So, sir, what makes you think that the new lady will not be disappointed as the old lady? Because at 215, this is a recipe for problems again. Well, you, you divide the, the weight to your height. So, I'm not obese. If you can divide my weight to my height, so that's how the, I think you guys medically do it. No, we don't do that. We actually, <laughs> we actually divide your weight with the square of your height in cent in meter square so basically you just take your, your so, weight in kilograms and then you divide actually uh the people who are on this platform are actually saying you are 97.5 kgs sir yes okay at 97.5 kgs mm -hmm. that is a serious problem sir so how and you're marrying a younger lady and yet the previous relationship you considered it uh a, a weird because the woman was sexually active more than you so how are you willing to change that in this one, in this new relationship? 
thinking to quit drinking. Yeah, because do you take beer or do you take the the scotch and wines and spirits? Anything. Yeah, they have to do with alcohol. I take it. Did you know beer and all that alcohol is highly estrogenic? So it actually turns men into being women. Mm, the first time I heard about that. Yes. I don't want to be a woman anyway. Yeah. Alcohol is actually estrogenic and specifically beer. Those things are highly estrogenic. They actually add fat to you. They add fat to your liver. And now that will be a problem because fat is the one that actually activates the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. So you'll end up getting problems. Don't you think it's high time you quit alcohol? Well, yes, I'm planning to. It's yeah. hard, but I will. Mm-hmm. Very hard. Please do, because again, alcohol is just taking money from your pocket. And if you have to be an ultimate provider for the lady that is coming in, then you have to be sane mentally. So definitely... Alcohol is going to become a problem to your relationship again. So you can't jump from the uh, from the frying pan straight to the fire. And remember, this is a younger lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she, yes. <laughs> yeah, she might, I, she might she might take you to a road trip, my friend. Uh, yes, because in uh, my previous marriage, I had a lot of shitting going on, and because of this, my woman was actually shitting to the point that uh, she she. Uh, brought a child out of of uh, our marriage oh. and i accepted that child i'm raising her she's 19 years old but yes it's because of that issue uh, so how does it feel uh, when you look at that daughter i embrace her i took her in and she loved me until today she called me daddy i never one day point out uh, that she's not my own daughter okay you know, i I have no intention to do that, and, and she knows, uh, I think she knows, she might hurt from someone else, but from me, I never mentioned that issue. Okay. I, I took her in, I, I gave her my last name, Yeah. Uh, and we, we, good since. So this is the reality, sir. The reality yeah. is you need to lose some weight, you need actually to be at around 70 or 75 kgs there, thereabout, and then after that, you actually need to fix your mental by dropping the alcohols reading some masculine books here and there getting into a relationship with men who actually are wiser and fitter and older than you and then of course relationships can always come but make sure before you get into that relationship if you are willing to bring this woman on board and for the longest period of time and then make sure that you have yourself fixed before trying to fix a relationship it's always fair when you find yourself fixed when you find your spirituality you fix your inside, you fix your physical, it's always easier to attract energy that is the same to that. But if you've never fixed yourself, the same thing will happen, the same cycle will just come again. So avoid those by actually fixing yourself by losing weight and then dropping the alcohol. Is that easy, okay? But, 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 but we celebrate you for taking responsibility for that daughter, so keep going and keep doing what you're doing. You're an amazing gentleman and we appreciate that you came on board. I put it through school, she was in college, apparently. She was in the United States military, and when she come out, she will finish her school, and, and she doing very great. I mean, we have good, uh, we talk all the time, every day, actually. We appreciate you, sir. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much for coming on board, and we wish you the best. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Awesome. <sighs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. That gentleman, that gentleman just made sense, right? And I know most, most, most ladies are wondering, hey, you know, but gentlemen, let me tell you this. As women get older, they become more uh, sexually active. So you will never find a chance to blame a woman for being sexually active because the older they, be, they get, the better they become sexually, okay? So now the issue is men dead downward. So you might end up leaving one woman and running to settle uh, for another woman. But uh, the point is, the point is, as you get into the new, the new relationship, it can get chaotic to some extent, okay? So you need to fix yourself before getting into a new relationship. Alcohol takes money from your pocket more than it brings back. Alcohol gives you erectile dysfunction later, later on. Alcohol shrinks your balls. Alcohol shrinks your brain. These are just side effects of alcohol. And given that it doesn't give you any benefits, why would you get involved in it? 
Run away from alcohol, my friends. Uh, who else is here? Who else is here? Who else is here? Where are the gentlemen? There's somebody who is saying I need to join. But you've not uh, requested to join, sir. You've not requested to join. I want you to request and then I bring you on board. Let's talk to Faris. Hey, today is going to be hot, my friends. Eugene Carlos, this live today is on fire as always. As always. No. Yes, uh, Faris. Good evening, sir. Good evening, how are you? I'm doing all right yourself. I'm doing fine. You are on air. Kindly talk to us. Yeah, um, my question was, um, do you ever have like accountability groups for men who are maybe going through a certain program or who are willing to achieve certain results? Accountability groups? Like exclusive groups. Okay, for men specifically? Yes, for men. No, I have accountability groups. For, for instance, people. I'm a hundred, I'm a, I'm a hundred and four. 104 kgs. 104 kgs. And what is your, your um, what is your age? It's a, I, I'm 33. 33. Are you having any uh, health condition already? Any underlying condition like diabetes or no. hypertension? No. Okay. No. no. So uh, and and the thing is, yeah. I know I know the right things to do and I do them, <laughs> okay. but I start then stop. For instance, I can. The whole of December and January, I used to walk 10 kilometers daily. Yeah. So I live around Langata and I do 5 kilometers to and 5 kilometers for 10 kilometers per day. Okay. And then I, I injured my ankle a bit and dice, I went back. The thing with me is it's either I'm doing the good things 100% or I'm doing the bad things 100%. There's no in between. Okay. So when I'm doing, when I'm healthy, I go all in. I do like, um, I even started doing the, I had started trying the carnivore diet. I was doing cooking with butter uh, and I was walking every day. Yeah. I had even started running, uh, but unfortunately I injured my ankle. Then it all went down. So I like what you told the gentleman there that you need to get a, a group, like a community of men yeah. who will hold you accountable. Well, not unless you start that because... But unless you yeah, start I'm that saying because, the comments as yeah. other men. Okay. Other men are also saying that they would, they would want to be in such a group. I'm seeing in the comments here. Oh, that's that's interesting. Actually, I think we should make one uh, to just hold men accountable. But this will have to be a tailored depending on uh, the different goals because not every man wants to lose weight. Not every man wants to recover from diabetes. So there, there are different groups. But for people who have diabetes, at least we have... A group for them and uh, we're actually trying to help them maintain the discipline but i'm going to look into that because that's a very brilliant idea bro i had never thought about it that way so i think yeah I think and it should be paid because yeah it should be a paid group because i feel like when people spend on something they, they don't the fall from it yes, they, they don't fall back and actually they'll yeah, see, they the, see value. the value and then they, we don't backslide if, oh, if people can get in and out for free the way they want, yeah. I feel like they'll just be like me where you just start it and a few weeks down the line you, you come out. But if you spend some money on it, you'll be like, you know what, I have to see my money's worth. Oh, bro, that's a very brilliant idea. I hope uh, my team is noting that because that has to be actually actualized. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And when I yeah, do that, I'll make sure... Between, yes? Yeah, between today maybe and tomorrow's live... Uh, or you can tell us when we can tune in to get that information when you and your team regroup and find out so that you can give us maybe a week to to register and then now we can kick start perfect that way even you can hold you can hold small lives for yeah for that specific specific group and uh, if we decide like uh every week the target is a kg or two kg we'll regroup and say hey where did you fall off and we can even in the chat room yeah. we can keep on encouraging each other if we decide that everyone is doing a walk every day, yeah, you won't be, you won't want to be the one who didn't do the walk. You really don't want to be the one pulling the other man behind. Sure, yeah. Thank you so much, bro. That's a very perfect insight, and I'll see to it that it happens as soon as possible. All right. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know where you'll post it so that sometimes not everyone who's in this life will get into uh, future lives. I don't know where you will get that information if you decide actually to start it. There is a Telegram channel that is already existent, but that one is just general Telegram channel. It's called Health and Wellness Sport. But that's where I post my, 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 yes. most of my insights. Huh? So what I would like to do is yes. I would like, I'd like most men on this platform to join that channel. And then from there, we can start that journey because 
want to communicate there, we simply open another Telegram channel for specifically men so that you can subscribe and join in. And once you join in, we just uh, kickstart our day and then it becomes exclusive content on that channel. What do you think about that? Yeah, actually, I'm part of that group, so I'll, I'll be on the lookout. Perfect, bro. Thank you so much, bro. That's a very good and insightful information. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Ah, man, man, man. Now, listen, this is the, this is, this is the reality about men. Men see themselves in the younger men. But women see themselves as the younger women. This is the reason why men will always be willing to pull other men up. An older man is looking at the younger man and seeing the mistakes and he tells it off. He says, hey bro, you're making mistakes here and this will cost you. But most women who are growing older, they hardly see the need to pull the younger woman up. What they see is they see themselves as the younger woman. Take your time and think about that. As I bring in the next guest, we only have five chances for guests today. Uh, the rest will come in tomorrow. But this is interesting. Hey man, I'm getting a lot about this. Let me bring in some, some feminine energy and vibe here so that we can... Ah man, this is interesting. Now we can do this live until morning. But again, we, don't, <laughs> we have our eight hours of sleep. Uh, this is who? Is your internet in order? This one, this one's internet is a little problematic. So, uh, Nandi legit, kindly fix your internet before you request again. Your internet is problematic. So let me bring in King. Hey, King is a very good title, gentlemen. To call yourself King because you own the empires. King, I hope uh, your palace has fixed internet. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine, King. How are you? Sounds fantastic, talk, my brother. Talk to us, bro. Yeah. Um, um, diabetes, 53 years and 58 kg. 53 years and 58 kgs? 58 kg. 60 or 58? 68. Okay, 68, okay. Yeah, last time I went to check my body they discover diabetes, which is last month. Um, you say uh, you say they discovered what? I'm I'm not able to hear you clearly. They check they check my my high blood, uh, the cholesterol yes. and diabetes. So my cholesterol is fine yes. according to them. The diabetes is uh, 14 point eight. Fourteen point eight. I don't understand. Yes. That is that, was, that is high, bro. Huh? That is high. Why? Why? Why do you have that? That's what that's what they told me. You know, um, my high blood is uh, 80, 85, straight one thirty two. I think. Have you have you done the, the the liver function tests? No. You need that test because we need to ascertain if you have a fatty liver, bro. A liver you can do it's called the LFTs, test. the liver function test. Please do that and then come back. We can actually uh, help you recover from that. Okay, they call it what? The liver L liver function test, LFT. Okay, liver function test. Okay. Yes, yes. I will do that tomorrow. Please I will do it tomorrow. Please do that and then you can get to me through uh, the contact that I provided. Zero seven zero seven. Then zero seven forty seven okay. twenty two. So I'll I'll post. I'll actually put the contact here after I drop the call. I'll put a contact here and pin it, so that you can use that to consult and uh, basically get your health back in order. No, it's fantastic. No problem. I will definitely do it tomorrow. I'll get back to you. No problem. Thank you so please much. Please put put the contact, please. Yeah, I'm going to put the contact here. Uh, okay. Thank you. Good. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Now, uh, before I even go to the next, let me just put this contact here for you guys. Guys on TikTok, you can use that contact for consultations. Remember, <laughs> uh, don't let them chase. Don't bring jokes on that contact. That is an office contact 0707074722. 0707074722. So uh, use that contact to book your appointments, both online and also uh, the physical appointments. There goes the contact. Now, listen, 
I was to talk about cholesterol lowering drugs or uh, lipid lowering drugs and their effects. I almost forgot until this gentleman mentioned that. So this is the point. You need cholesterol to survive. As a man, you need cholesterol to survive. Don't, there is no types of cholesterol. There is no bad and good cholesterol. Cholesterol is just one. That LDL that they call the bad cholesterol and that HDL that they call good cholesterol, those are just carriers. LDL carries cholesterol from the liver to the system to fix inflammation. HDL carries cholesterol from the system back to the liver. Okay? To use, the liver uses it to make different things. So the liver cannot make a substance that will actually harm you. So therefore, cholesterol has never been a problem. And remember, cholesterol is used to make brain cells because 80% of brain cells are cholesterol. And also, they require cholesterol for energy in form of ketone bodies. Number two, cholesterol is used to form your skin and vitamin D. You need it. Cholesterol is a fat that is essential for you to absorb fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. Cholesterol is used to form testosterone, so you cannot have uh, an erection without testosterone. Cholesterol is used to form a hormone that is called aldosterone, that actually is used to actually help you control blood pressure. So it, when you have high blood pressure, this hormone tells the kidneys to excrete salt and water, and your blood pressure falls, and vice versa. Cholesterol is actually used to form your muscle tissue. So if you have problems with cholesterol, you have problems with the muscles. And also the nerve covering that is called myelination. So that, that, that uh, covering on the nerve, the insulation, is actually, called, is actually cholesterol. And all your cells are made of a lipid bilayer. That is another cholesterol. So you cannot survive without cholesterol. Please, think that in. Don't let your doctor lie to you that cholesterol is a problem. Now, when you use cholesterol-lowering drugs, example is atovastatin or rosuvastatin, what you're doing is you're going, to lower, you're going to block your liver from making cholesterol. And your liver makes cholesterol every single day. You require it. That's why I tell you to eat six to eight eggs every day without doubt, with no doubt. Eat six to eight eggs a day. Eggs will never make you fat. What makes you fat is the carbohydrates. So, for example, if you take a drug like atovastatin that will actually block your synthesis of cholesterol, do you know what will happen? You will lower the production of cholesterol from the liver. And then you'll end up in cholesterol deficiency. You'll start having a very bad skin, a sagging skin and stuff. You'll end up in low vitamin D, so vitamin D deficiency. You'll also have vitamin A, D, E, and K deficiency because they are fat-soluble vitamins. You'll start losing memory. You'll start having nerve problems and numbness. You'll start having hypertension. Imagine taking a cholesterol-lowering drug and end up getting hypertension because you've affected the hormone that controls blood pressure. You end up getting erectile dysfunction because as cholesterol goes down, testosterone goes down. And guess what is going to happen? That one drug is going to give them another seven drugs for treatment of side effects of just one drug. Now, cholesterol is not a problem. Cholesterol comes in to fix what sugar, seed oils, and wheat products did to you. So drop those foods and enjoy your cholesterol-rich foods. Because if they tell you to drop cholesterol, foods, your blood cholesterol levels are supposed to normalize. But have you ever realized, as you drop those foods, your cholesterol levels are always high. And then now they have to give you a drug. I expected, if you're telling me to drop cholesterol-rich foods, my blood cholesterol will stabilize. How comes they are going up? Because when you stop eating cholesterol-rich foods, your liver produces more cholesterol. Okay? Because it has to balance that, that, that input and, and output. If you eat more eggs, the liver produces less cholesterol. So don't buy that nonsense. They're actually making a prescription for other drugs. So you drop cholesterol-rich foods, and then you end up in erectile dysfunction, you need... Uh, the blue pill, you end up in hypertension, you need other drugs for hypertension, you lose memory, you need another drug for memory and dementia, you end up having muscle wasting, you need a drug for that, the collagen tablets, you end up losing vitamin D, so you need vitamin D supplements. How will you ever survive? Use beef tallow to cook. Yes, use beef tallow. So let me bring in the last three guests and we close it up. Hey. One lady and two men for this one. Boil eggs, eat boiled eggs, eat fried eggs, eat scrambled eggs, as long as they are fried or scrambled in ghee. Yes, uh, Nandi. Is it Nandi legit? Nandi, you're live on air. How are you? Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi. Talk to us. You are live with us um, on air. Uh, I just wanted to conclude about you. Kindly move yeah, me. So me. Chukua, um, I was not accepted, so that's why. But you are on already, so you can Hello? continue. You can continue. Why is your Hello? internet problem problematic? Yeah, what you are saying is true. 
because I'm type 2 diabetes. And what you are saying is true because my diabetes have really gone down. Yes. <clears throat> when I started eating the proteins, but people are telling me it's dangerous because of cholesterol, but I don't believe it. My sugar have gone down. I'm eating maximum veggies with protein. Like you say, it's not bad to eat two or three eggs a day. Even eight. It's not bad. Even eight eggs. Now listen to me. Th thoughts are evil at all times. Thoughts, thoughts are not who we are. Thoughts are what yeah. people put in our head. So don't listen to them. Um, it is you. To... It is you who is experiencing Good. health. And since I started to eat more protein, I should have really gone down. Ah, Nandi legit. I don't think I'm getting you clearly. I you think. What I'm saying now. Ah, woo. Nandi legit had a very interesting story, but unfortunately, her internet. I don't know if it's her internet or. Uh, sorry about that, Nandi. Sorry about that. The righteous yeah. shall flourish. And you know what they are saying? Ah, you are eating. What is wrong with that? The righteous. Too much protein. You are eating too much. What is wrong with Nandi? Nothing. <laughs> hey. Okay. The righteous shall flourish. How are you? I'm fine, Dr. Lewis. Welcome aboard. You're live on air. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Thank you so much for the great work that you've been doing. You're I've welcome. been following you from uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Ooh. I've learned a lot from you. And I've been sharing these uh, videos to a lot of people and uh, platforms that I'm on. Yeah. Thank you so much. Keep the good work. Bro. And the Lord will continue to bless you. Man, thank you I'm so much. I'm very grateful, sir. That is a blessing. Thank you so much for... It is an eye-opening. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. What is happening? The righteous has passed our regards, has also shared our lives. Now listen, if you're here and you've never shared our life, that's a serious problem. Please, people need this information. Share it with people. So, one more person to go. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow on the live that starts at 9. That is the testimonial Tuesdays. Bring your testimony on board. William, how are you? Hello. Hello, you're live on air. Uh, can you hear me? I can't really hear you. I am hearing you clearly, loud and clearly. No, I can't hear you. Okay. Let me go down and resend again, please. No problem. What is happening? Uh, I think everybody's hearing me clearly because I see the response on the timeline. So guys, uh, it's time to close down. Possibly the last person, then we close it down. We can't be here the whole night, okay? I'll bring in the last person, then we disappear. Tomorrow uh, at 9, we shall do our live again. So thank you so much for joining in. And now, let's just finish it up with Obilo. How are you, Obilo? I'm very good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, sir. You're live on air. Talk to us. Yes, I don't have anything to say. Just to let you know that it's been so wonderful. No blood pressure medication since then, I told you. Everything is fine, you know. I am so happy. Thank you so much, and keep doing a good job. Man. I know you are rounding off before I just joined, but mm. uh, I have no business with all, all, all any blood pressure medication right now. So it's been wonderful. Oh man, you man. are doing a good job. You're man. teaching people, delivering people, saving people's lives, and uh, God bless you so much. Man, thank you so much, man. Keep changing lives yes. in Norway, yeah. bro. It's a pleasure to yes, always have you on board. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ra. Yeah. Oh, man, this is awesome. I, I don't think I'll do anything more. I'll close it on that note. Thank you so much for joining in. This is the Health and Wellness Pod. This is Dr. Lewis, one of the favorite doctors, of course, online and physically. We bridge the gap between healthcare and the general public. We make sure that you get the adequate information that you require so that when you choose to consume healthcare, 
you do it with a very sane mind. I am also somebody who glorifies God by easing pain and suffering from his people. And it's always a pleasure to serve you. If at all you have any uh, inquiry you need to make, consult us through the 0707-0747-22. 0707-0747-22. That is our contact for online consultation and also physical consultation. We will be in Nairobi, don't forget, the week that starts on 25th or the way to 29th. Bring that relative, come, come one, come two, come all. Let's flock that week so that we can make it interesting. We will change your life for the better. And remember, we are under an oath. We are professionals. We do this for the sake of changing lives and making it easier and better for each one of you. Thank you so much for being here for the last one hour, 40 minutes. We'll see you tomorrow on the uh, Testimonial Tuesdays. And I hope that God protects you. Be a good person. Ramadan Karim to those people who are Muslims. Let's continue fasting. Let's continue getting health benefits from the fast as we get the spiritual nourishment from the fast. Until next time, see you.